Yeah, I think, um, well, first, a quick shout out. Uh, I realized but didn't realize I talked to Modi before the uh, game and uh, just a shout out to his family uh, and their safety and their well-being over in Israel. Uh, they're kind of in the middle of a bad area over there and he's quite concerned about what's happening over there and um, just our thoughts and prayers are with uh, his family uh, as they navigate the uh, next few weeks and months over there. Uh, really proud of our group, obviously. Um, it was just the next man up and, and um, just building on what we've been trying to do here. And um, I thought they just were relatively consistent across the board. And uh, we're trying to take the three ball out of play a little bit. It got away from us a little bit uh, in a late run there. But um, for the most part, I thought we stayed uh, pretty um, on point with um, our game plan coming in. And a lot of different guys chipped in, which is um, real pleasing. You haven't had to play without Milton very often. And then your boss, Marcus, and only had him for 10 minutes as well. So, I mean, two of your most important players, and to come out with a performance like that, well, we always pride ourselves here uh, uh, from day one, uh, in the exception of the team, to have depth and guys that were willing to do the work continuously during uh, the good times and bad times over the course of these last two and a half years. And just like throwing uh, Lockie Barker in there, I trust him to be out on the floor and he's ready to go. And um, I see these guys performing every single day. I can't play them all, uh, but the guys that step up and play, I have no problem playing them. And uh, I trust you know everyone across the board on our roster, and when they're putting in that kind of work, um, these are the moments that you step in, and you maybe never step out of a rotation. It happened last year with Shawnee Mack in the beginning of the season with four injuries, and we could never get him back out of the lineup. So, uh, opportunity. Um, a big shout out to Milton Doyle. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are with him. The funeral's tomorrow for his father. Um, I'm sure he's excited about this uh, outcome for us, and um, you know these guys played very hard for him. You've wanted to see improvement in your team defensively, um, especially that first half and that second quarter. The defense was probably just about as good as it's been this season. Are you happy with the, the progress? Yeah, I mean, we're creeping in the right direction. Uh, we're, again, our, our schemes and what we do and what we've been doing here for the last two and a half years, I think, is pretty good in general. Uh, this year, uh, we just got away from uh, missing some scouts, uh, missing some assignments. Um, and just kind of you know, unnecessary gambling. And when you add five or six new players into the mix and, and um, you're retraining and reprogramming some of them from their old habits, um, you're going to live with some bad results at times. And uh, I don't mind losing games as long as we're doing it in, in the way that we play. Uh, but um, our defense, I think, is relatively solid, and, and hopefully can, we can build on it. And if we're doing that, especially on the road, uh, it gives us our best opportunity to, to have a chance to win somewhere. Some of the numbers that jump out, you got to the foul line 29 times. I mean, you had 25 offensive rebounds. I think you only had 10, 10 turnovers. Those are those are all traits that you, you like to live by. Absolutely. You know, we don't get to the foul line probably enough over the course of the season. This was one of those games where we did get to the foul line quite a bit, which was, again, uh, one of the things that we were focusing on over these last few weeks to make sure that we we're getting our feet into the paint and, and um, not settling for poor shot selection and trying to avoid that as much as possible. And then, um, you know, we, we emphasize offensive rebounding um, heavily with our group. Um, and um, to see that kind of number is obviously a little out of the ordinary. But um, great credit to them. They were relentless on the glass and really proud of the group. Jordan, um, how proud are you of the team for, for that performance tonight? Oh, man, they, I'm super proud. We, we were following the scout. Um, like Coach said, like we had some slip ups towards the end of the game that we got to clean up if we want to continue to go in the right direction. But for the most part, you know, we're solid. We're getting after it. And I think it started um, earlier this week by just doing the little things and going through our things that we normally do in practice and taking each day serious and trying to win each day. You, you really set the tone in the first half as well. Did you, knowing that you were without Milton, did you take it upon yourself to be, I mean, you, you're always aggressive, but did you want to be even more aggressive? Um, yeah, maybe a little more aggressive, but um, I think it started with my teammates. Um, they encouraged me and were telling me to be super aggressive and saying whatever whatever happens, we're going to live with you being aggressive. Um, they were super confident in me, and it's amazing to have teammates like that um, that just buy in with you and have your back always. So um, it, it was great. What do you think it says about this team that you're able to perform without, without Milton and without Marcus for the most part? From, from from a player's point of view, what do you think it says about your group? Um, I think it shows a lot of character. Um, just that the next guy steps steps up and 
you know, we, we play as a team, regardless of who do we have. Um, you know, we have our principles, we have our rules. Um, and, you know, we see it in practice every day with us competing with each other. Um, we have a great team. So it was just the next man up, and everybody came and stepped up. Scott, Will Magnac, I mean, he only played 80 minutes a game, but you were plus, plus 20 when he was on the, on the court. He had a double-double. I think they've only got him down for one block, but it's pretty com comfortable being, being more than that. He's, he's having an amazing impact right now. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm I always impressed with him just because uh, the battle that he's been in for the last two and a half years of coming back, re-getting injured, coming back, and then this time coming back, uh, he was total focus and all in and um, just ready to go right when he first made his debut, uh, what, three or four games ago. So uh, he's got a lot of room to grow and build, and his conditioning can injure to get with uh, what he needs to get done. but. Uh, he's quite impactful, and I said this before, he's one of the best pick-and-roll defenders uh, that I've seen in quite a long time. He just is clever and smart, and uh, he's got size and, and, and toughness. And uh, again, you know, uh, Marcus didn't obviously uh, get off to a great start, and I, I didn't play him the rest of the game. I just felt comfortable with the guys I had. But Marcus gives us another dynamic, uh, which is really handy and helpful, too. So to have those two kind of guys um, at their skill set, um, you know, helps our defense, but, and it gives these guys encouragement to go out and guard a little bit more aggressive at times, and knowing that you got somebody like that sitting behind you. Are you, are you comfortable that your relationship is strong enough with someone like Marcus, where he can take this on the chin and he'll he'll bounce back next week? A thousand percent. Uh, these guys know from day one when they came here that I don't play favorites. I play the guys that are doing the right things and working. Uh, but more importantly, I find high character guys that understand that uh, the game is bigger than themselves. And Marcus is one of those guys. He's the first one to be in the huddles, first one to be high fiving, first one to give me a high five uh, when we got in the locker room. And I find guys that have high character and that they're not self um, self absorbed by who they are and what they think about. Um, and it's always about me. We don't have any me guys on our roster, and we'll never have any me guys on my roster. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you. Can I ask any questions? We have one gentleman sitting here. You'd like to ask some questions? Sure. Is that David Long? Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. I'll help you out anytime <laughs> I can there. Thanks. I was going to ask, when someone like uh, John scores 12 in the first 14 points, how does that sort of impact what the, what the Breakers are going to react to that? Well, I think he just set the table for us to get the scoreboard ticking over and get some guys comfortable uh, and rhythm to play and, and, and find their way. And so um, when you're taking the scoreboard over and you kind of have a little bit of lead or, you know, the game is – um, is going in, kind of in our direction a little bit. Uh, he's making all that happen and giving other guys confidence to, to join in, um, as opposed to, you know, if we got off to a really slow start, you know, it might be a little bit different story. But he set the table for these guys, um, and he continued to make sure that uh, the scoreboard was ticking over for us. But we had some great contributions in a short amount of minutes. You know, Majuk Dang had a really bad two or three minutes, took him out, came back in, gets 14 points in like 14 minutes. And Jack McVeigh just does what he does. He does his constant and steady. Uh, Sean McDonald was fantastic until he cramped up at the end of the game. Uh, we just had a lot of guys. Fab came in and played really good minutes. Clint Stein also. Um, uh, our guys just do the right things for the most part, uh, and I can live with um, um, you know, some of the mistakes they make. But at the end of the day, uh, it is about the work, and um, this guy set the table for them. And, uh, I know you're focusing on your, your team out there, but um, there's a lot of expectations on the breakers this season, and they're now 4-9. What, what's your assessment? Well, I don't really want to speak on behalf of them because I don't know all the dynamics that are going on there. All I know is that um, this game is quite brutal at times, and you know to have a barrage of injuries that they've gone through um, is really hard to overcome, uh, especially in this league. There's just too many good teams that just keep coming after you, and it's hard to recover from that. Um, and Cheatham being out, he's a monster. Uh, if they get healthy, you know they'll be a still a problem, in my opinion, um, here in the next few weeks if they can get their act back together and get these guys back on the floor. But, you know, um, I had them as one of the top two or three teams in the league uh, before the season started. Um, and it's just unfortunate that that's how it's kind of gone to this point. Um, Modi's, you know, a really good young coach. And uh, they play a really nice style of basketball. Um, and just sometimes the basketball guards uh, are just not rewarding uh, some situations. And, you know, um, things are happening. A lot of teams are losing players here and there. We played tonight basically with one, one import. Um, and it's tough to navigate at times, um, but they seem to have a rash of injuries at the wrong time, and um, it's been tough.